Now imagine that this rope is a timeline of your existence. You just exist forever. You see this red part? This would represent your time on earth. You've got a few short years here on earth, and then you've got all of eternity somewhere else. This is, this is your existence. And what blows me away is some of you, all you think about is this red part. It's all you think about. You're consumed with this. You go, oh man, I can't wait till here. You know, I'm going to work hard. I'm going to save, save, save so I can really enjoy this part right here. And you're consumed with that. And you're thinking, oh man, I'm going to get to travel. Am I going to eat well? Am I going to do this during this part? And I'm like, are you kidding me? What about this? What about this? What about this? What about all this stuff? It's just, it's crazy to me because the Bible teaches that what I do during this little red part determines how I'm going to exist for millions and millions and millions of years forever. And, and so why would I spend this little red part trying to make myself as comfortable as possible, enjoying myself as much as I can, Paul says, look, I'm going to live my life for this mission. I'm going to spend my life, invest my life for this moment when I cross that finish line. See, I'm going to forget about all this stuff I could enjoy. And I'm not going to look around. I'm going to be like a runner just looking at that moment when I face God. Because when I face him, then I don't get this chance over again. We get one chance at this life on earth. And it can end at any second for any of us. We've got one chance at this. And then comes eternity. It doesn't make any sense. Paul goes, I'm not going to look around at all this stuff. And it's tempting. It's tempting to all of us. That's what I'm saying down here. It's crazy because everyone lives that way. Everyone lives for the red part. No one's thinking about the millions of years afterwards. It's, it's just this crazy deception that we can't get out of our minds. And Paul goes, I'm not doing that. That's Francis Chan. You see why I'm always quoting that guy? I love that guy. He is awesome. So the question, the idea here, the point of showing that video is, so what is the point of the little red part? What's the point of our lives? What are we supposed to be doing? What are we living for? There's this uh, young guy in the Bible. He walks up to Jesus and he says, teacher, master, what's the greatest commandment? And the question that he was really getting at is, how do I make sure I don't mess this up? If I only had one thing to focus on, if I only had one thing to do with my life, what should I do? How do I make sure I don't waste this? How do I make sure I don't mess this up? And Jesus says more eloquently than I will what I say every week. You got two jobs, buddy. Love the Lord your God and love the people that he's placed in your life. That's the point in your life. In fact, Jesus says, this is how everyone's going to know that you're my disciples. By the way, you love one another. So what I'm going to talk about tonight, what I'm going to tell you is going to be hard to hear. Because what we're going to talk about cuts completely against the grain of the way we live in America. The way we, it's, just, it's just not the way we do things in our culture and, and, and in our country. So I'm just going to say, here's what I want to say. There's no excuse. There's absolutely no exception. There's no situation where it's okay not to love. Okay? It's not a choice. It's not up to you in any given circumstance. It's a command. Absolutely a biblical command. It's your job. And the thing that the thing that I think is going to be hard for you to take is it's not okay to quit. And it's not okay to give up no matter what. No, absolutely no matter what. There's this, there's this list in the Bible of the one another's, what you're supposed to do, how you're supposed to treat one another. And the list of one another's goes something like this: love one another. Be at peace with one another, show hospitality to one another, honor one another, receive one another, do not fight with one another, serve one another, don't envy one another, admonish one another, greet one another, care for one another, show deference to one another, 
Forgive one another. Be kind to one another. Submit to one another. Don't lie to one another. Provoke to good works one another. Comfort one another. Concern yourselves in the affairs of one another. Don't hate one another. Don't speak evil about one another. Instead, pray for one another. Be like-minded toward one another. Do not hold a grudge with one another. Highly esteem one another. Don't be partial to one another. Have fellowship with one another. Edify one another. Teach one another. Do good to one another. Exhort one another. Minister spiritual gifts to one another. These are the commands of Scripture. The commands of Scripture. And it's all boiled down, like Jesus said, to love God and love your neighbor. That's how you do all of those things to one another. And that's the only thing that actually matters. That's the only thing that matters in this red part of that robe. How you do those two things. That's the only thing that matters. And like in school, 50% is failure. You might be thinking, well, I've got the love God part down. Failure. Paul says, if I give to the poor, if I can speak in heavenly languages, if I can do all of these religious things, if I can do all of these things to show my love for God, but I don't have love, I am nothing. Jesus says it like this. He says, how can you love God who you don't see if you don't love your neighbor who you do see? And you're thinking, I get it, I get it. But the truth is, no, we don't. You've heard it, but we don't get it. And the reason is, there's all sorts of excuses. <laughs> there's all sorts of exceptions. There's all sorts of situations where we believe that it doesn't count here, and it doesn't count right now, and we're off the hook in this situation, and there's people that we think that we don't actually have to love. We're in a sermon series on fasting from wrong thinking, and our wrong thought for tonight goes something like, it's okay to treat somebody bad if they're not my friend, if they're mean to me, if they've hurt me. In one sentence, the wrong thought for tonight is, it's okay to repay evil for evil. It's okay. At least sometimes. It's okay to repay evil for evil. It's not okay. Revenge is evil. Here's what the Bible says about revenge. Lena, could you put up Matthew 5, 38 through 40? You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I tell you, don't resist an evildoer. On the contrary, if anyone slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other to him also. As for the one who wants to sue you and take away your shirt, let him have your cloak as well. Let's see uh, 1 Peter 3, 9 through 12, please, Lena. Not paying back evil for evil or insult for insult, but on the contrary, give a blessing since you were called for this, so that you can inherit a blessing. For the one who wants to, wants to love life and to see good days must keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. He must turn away from evil and do good. He must seek peace and pursue it, because the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their request. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Let's look at Romans, <coughs> Romans 12. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Try to do what is honorable in everyone's eyes. If possible, on your part, live at peace with everyone. Friends, do not avenge yourselves. Instead, leave room for his wrath, because it's written, Vengeance belongs to me. I will repay, says the Lord. If your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. For in doing so, you'll be heaping fiery coals on his head. Don't be conquered by evil. But conquer evil with good. Go ahead and go to black screen for me, please, Lena. How many of you remember me coming here, not this, I came this summer, but the year before that? You guys remember that? <clears throat> I came, and the first thing I did was I went up to Valley Camp in Prescott Pines. Do you know what happened that week? 
Raise your hand if you know that I'm, uh, I ride scooters. I like scooters. My first ever scooter, her name was Barbara Streisand. <laughs> she was tangerine colored, beautiful. She was brand new. I put like 200 miles on her or something like that. She was parked out front of my house, and I woke up in the morning, and I went out to see Barbara, and somebody had taken her, probably put her on a truck and driven off with her. Somebody stole my scooter. The thing about it is, I'll literally give you anything you ask me for. When I was in high school, to a fault, I take the passage in Luke seriously when it says give to anyone who asks from you. When I was in high school, I had this weird crisis of faith because somebody asked me for my guitar. And I didn't know what to do because I was taking the Bible a little bit too literally at that point. I gave it to him. I'll give you anything you ask me for, so don't steal from me. Don't take from me. It makes me so mad, and it made me so mad at the time. And I'm ashamed of this now, but I have to share it because it shows just what we're capable of. It made me so mad at the time that I actually played out a fantasy in my head of the person that stole my scooter riding down my street, and I clotheslined them off of it. <laughs> I played that fantasy off in my head. And it's funny when I, when I tell the story, but here's the thing. I, I've crashed that scooter before. In 200 miles, I crashed it. Um, I fell off of it, and, and I heard my collarbone snap. And it hurt really bad. Crash, falling off a scooter is not a good thing. And my desire to repay evil for evil on whoever it was that took my scooter was not a good thing. It's evil. It's evil. The world, society, they say it's okay. <laughs> it's okay to get even. It's normal to want to get even. And you might be thinking, like, you might actually be thinking in your head, is it really not okay to hate someone who hates you? What if they hate you? Is it really not okay to hate them? No, it's not okay. The Bible says, bless those who curse you. You might be thinking, is it really not okay to talk trash about somebody who's lied about me? Who's spread rumors about me? Someone who's picked on me my whole life. It's not okay to talk bad about them? No. It's not okay. It's not actually okay. Speak well about others no matter what they say about you. But she stole my boyfriend. <laughs> he hit me first. They lied to me. They stole from me. They hurt me. The world says, don't get mad, get even. The Bible says something weird and different. The Bible says, go ahead and get mad, but don't get even. The Bible says, in your anger, do not sin. In your anger, do not sin. Now what that means is, it's assuming that you're angry. It's saying, it's okay that you're angry, but don't sin. There are four basic feelings. Anybody who deals with developmental psych or little kids or anything, you know the four basic feelings. Mad, bad, sad, and glad, right? God knows that you're going to get hurt. He knows that you're going to get angry, and that you're going to get sad, and that you're going to feel bad sometimes. He knows this. Now, society tells us to bottle up our emotions, to hide our feelings, especially if you're a man. And society says, you know, it's okay. It's understandable if sometimes you explode. <laughs> it's okay. It's understandable if sometimes in the process of bottling up your emotions, you lash out at each other if they deserve it. It's okay. As long as they deserve it, it's okay. God says no. He knows when you're hurt. He knows that you get angry and he says that's okay and he wants to hear all about it he wants you to tell him about it but it's not okay to repay evil for evil revenge is never okay I want you to hear me when I say this again revenge is evil I'd like you to say that out loud say revenge is evil, revenge is evil. Right, now you said it now here's <laughs> here's why here's why because that's his job. That's it. That's the thing. Revenge isn't okay for us to do because that's his job. And we don't do his job. We do our job. 
God says, vengeance is mine. I will repay. And the good thing is, God's good at his job. He's the one who knows how to really, actually make things better. Think about us. Think about our situation as people. The Bible says that while we were God's enemies, Christ died for us. While we were his enemies. We think of sin as a crime, right? We generally think of sin as a crime that demands punishment. God thinks of sin as a disease. And he knows that the way to really fix things the way to really make things right is to heal us. Not to punish us, to heal us. To help us not to keep sinning. Now think about your own life for a second, your own personal life. Raise your hand if you've sinned. Now keep it up if you sin all the time. The wages of sin is death. We deserve help. Because of our behavior, because of our actions, because of our thoughts and our emotions and our desires. But now the last time you checked, did God kill you and send you to hell? He knows. He actually knows. He loves you and he loves me. And he knows that the only way to really fix what we've done is to fix us. He knows that. To heal us. And that's exactly what he's doing to us, even right now. He's doing spiritual surgery on us, like Pastor Jeff likes to say. And he's trying to fix our hearts and help us stop doing what's wrong, help us stop the evil in our lives. He's fixing us. He's at work on us. And tonight, what he wants us, what he wants from us, is that we would let him help us stop seeking revenge. Let him help us stop seeking revenge. Because just like he knows the best way to fix us, he knows the best way to fix the hurt in our lives and the hurt in our relationships and the hurt in our hearts. And he already has a plan on how he's going to make it up to you. He's already figured out and he's already working on making it better. Vengeance is his, God says, and he will repay the very same day, I kid you not, the very same day that somebody stole Barbara Streisand, I was helping my friend, his name is Josh Woodrow, he, I don't know if any of you guys have been around that long, but he married Jenny Bilstein, if you know her from this congregation, Josh Woodrow, a buddy of mine at the SEM, I was helping him move, pack up a storage unit into a truck to go on his vicarage to Rockford the year before I went on my vicarage to here. I was helping him pack it up, and in the very back of his storage unit, after we picked everything out and put it in the truck, the very back of his storage unit was White Lightning, which was White Lightning, <laughs> my new scooter. And he said, I can't ride this in Rockford because it snows in Illinois. If you can get it to run, you can have it. So that same exact day, I took home White Lightning. I spent a couple weeks and a little bit of money trying to get it working, but then I had, I had a scooter. And... It might not be, you know, as perfect as one for one, scooter for scooter, or your, your boyfriend dumps you and then you get married in college. I don't know how, it's not always one for one, perfect, perfect, but God already has a plan on how he's going to fix the hurt, how he's going to fix the brokenness, how he's going to fix the things that people do to you. He already has a plan and he's already working on it and it's his job. So while he does his job, what we do with the red part of our rope is we do our job. Repay evil with good. Love God and love the people that he's placed in your life. All of them. Even the ones that hurt you. Pray for them. Even the ones that hurt you, love them. Especially the ones that hurt you, forgive them. And point them to God. Because he's desiring to fix what they've done by fixing them. The same that he's doing for us.